Hey everybody, it's Pastor James again, and uh, I'm going to do a short video on a, on a really cool idea that I got from another church, Church of the Highlands, um, and it's a rolling keyboard stand. So we make changes to our stage uh, every week. Uh, for Wednesday night, our setup is different than Sunday, so we're moving around our keyboard quite a bit. We have the, the, the typical scissor stand or the X stand, and... Um, it just it didn't work well for us because I was having to take the keyboard off, set it to the side, move the stand, set the keyboard back on. And even though it wasn't uh, a lot of work, it just uh, when I saw this rolling keyboard stand, I thought, man, that's the answer to our, our problem. So I'm just going to briefly walk you through uh, how I created this, uh, this stand. Okay, here we go. Let's start by taking a look at the stand, the finished product overall. Uh, here it is, and um, it's a stable platform. Uh, the wheels work very well. It's got a great clean look, and best of all, it, it moves easily without the danger of having to lift the keyboard off and put it back on and move the stand. And There's just so many things that can go wrong there. We're able to keep the cables, all the cables connected, and simply all I do is when I need to make a stage change, I unlock the wheels, I pick up the um, pick up the pedal and move the stand, and then put the pedal down, lock the wheels, and I'm ready to go. It takes seconds instead of having to unhook everything, move everything, put it back together. I'm just it, it's wonderful. We've had it for over a year, and I cannot say enough about it. It's been a great addition to our platform. Let's talk about a materials list. Uh, Here's the, here's the list that we used. You may be able to find a different stand and things like that, but I'm just going to tell you what we used um, because I found it to be the best option out there. So first of all, we, used, we started with the K&M Omega Stand. I purchased that one in particular, even though it was a little more expensive than what I would usually spend. I purchased it because it, it doesn't move very much at all. As a matter of fact, I would say if it didn't have the casters, it really doesn't move. It's, it's a very stable, stable stand, and I wanted that uh, since, the, since the keyboard was going to be up on a stand that was rolling anyway. Uh, I wanted to make sure that that stand did not move, didn't shake or vibrate, and this one provided that for us while still providing the ability to raise and lower the stand uh, as we needed to. So uh, great choice for us. Again, the Omega, the K&M Omega stand, can't recommend it enough. Then we needed casters. Uh, I simply picked up four casters from Lowe's, our local hardware store, uh, along with some lock washers. And um, I picked up three inch casters, two of them locking, two of them non-locking. And uh, and use those. Uh, they're just rubber wheels. They roll very easily. The three inch, I was worried that the three inch wouldn't be big enough, but they're actually the perfect size uh, for this project. And uh, the locking mechanisms work great, although I've found after over uh, after a year of using it that we rarely actually lock the wheels. Uh, it's so with the carpet on there, it's so stable that we don't we don't have to lock the wheels. So um, just an idea. Anyways, and then on top of that, we had to have, of course, some, some, uh, something to tie down the wires and things. And so we purchased some uh, zip ties and Velcro straps, again, from Lowe's. And we also purchased some split flex plastic tubing to, put the, to route the power cable and the, um, and the XLR cable to the keyboard through. So that uh, we can, again, we can leave those cables attached. Let's talk about the modifications to the stand itself. Uh, as you can see, there, there are some rubber bumpers on all of the ends of this stand. The rubber bumpers on the bottom had a little bit of a, of a lip uh, that you can see in this particular picture. And it, it was a, about, I'm guessing, a little bit less than half an inch. And I wanted to remove that because I knew that that would provide some, some instability to the uh, to the casters and I wanted to make sure that even though there was a little bit of a rubber bumper between the caster and the metal of the uh, of the frame uh, I wanted to reduce that down to as small as I could get it so that it would be uh, there wouldn't be any movement in the caster so what I did was I removed the the bumpers on the bottom of the of the stand 
Um, that took some doing. I had to drill out a little uh, plastic. Um, it was it was kind of a little plastic rivet. Um, I had to drill that out and then use a screwdriver to pry the plastic or the rubber bumper off. And uh, and then I just simply took a razor blade and cut off all the extra. Uh, material that I didn't want. As you can see in this picture, this is what was left over. Um, just be very careful. Uh, the razor blade would tend to slip a lot, and so I was very, very careful on how I did it so I did not cut myself. And uh, and I, as you can see in this picture, I was able to get all the material off so that I could get the caster as close to the metal as possible. So after I did that, after I got that material off, I then put the rubber bumper back on the end of the, the feet of the stand, and then I drilled through uh, both the rubber bumper and the um, stand until, uh, and I drilled actually from the bottom where the hole was for the little rivet, I drilled right through that, made sure that I had a hole the size that I needed for the caster to go, the stem of the caster to go through. For me, I think it was 5 16 if I remember. Um, and so I drilled that through and then uh, just simply bolted on the wheel. It was really simple. Um, I snugged it down as tight as I could without bending the metal um, of, of the feet of the, uh, of the stand and just got it nice and snug and it worked out really well. And you had to, uh, right away had a rolling platform. So then I turned my attention to wiring. And what I did was I actually attached, as you can see in this picture, I attached the direct box and the power supply to the stand itself. I simply used zip ties. I found a nice narrow uh, direct box, then used a zip tie, two zip ties to attach that. And then uh, right next to that, I zip tied the power supply to the, this was the old power supply for the original keyboard that we had on here, which was a Yamaha. And so I zip tied that to it and then ran the power cable to it and then used uh, Velcro straps to go up the legs of the, of the stand um, with the cables and attach them to the to the stand itself. I used Velcro there instead of zip ties in case I ever needed to remove those cables or change keyboards and I'm glad I did. Um, as it turns out we did change keyboards and, and using the Velcro on the legs instead of the zip ties really helped us to make that change and to make it pretty seamlessly. Um, here you can see our current setup. We use the we use a Nord, and uh, it has a more standard uh, power supply. So we just simply uh, strapped that to the side of the uh, leg, and um, and connected it up. It works great. You can see here that we used the Flex plastic tubing to run both the power supply and the uh, XLR through and it just sits wound up on our floor. It's got a very clean look. It moves easily. It doesn't put any stress on the XLR at all. Um, and uh, so we're very, very pleased. In this last video, I just wanted to show you how stable the platform is. You can see I'm playing pretty hard there and it doesn't move. It doesn't rock or shake. It's very, very stable platform for the keyboard. So when I want to move it, I just pick up the pedal, unlock the casters, and move it. It's that simple. No undoing of the cables, no disconnect, no removing the keyboard, just move the stand and the keyboard at the same time. Put the pedal down when you're where you want to be, lock the casters, and you're ready to play. There it is, folks. If you have any questions about this project, feel free to leave me a comment, and I'll respond as soon as I can. Have a great day. Blessings.